Unfortunately, there's one place where this idea really doesn't work, and it threatens to undermine the whole uh, concept. More embarrassingly, this one place is this one, Delphi. Now, if you're listening, I said that the constellation of Delphinus rises after the winter solstice. But I also said that the oracle was consulted in February or March. So we have this problem, because if the month that all the Apollo festivals are occurring in is immediately after the rising of Delphinus, we'd expect them to be months following either late December or in January. And that's what we find at Olus, that's what we find at Athens. But in this particular case, we're a month out of, out of sequence. We need to be a month later. So what's going on? Well, as you can see from this photo here, we have an awful lot of cliffs around Delphi. In fact, if you want to make astronomical observations, this is probably one of the worst places you could choose to stand. Here's a photo I took when I was there. And you can see that the temple is facing into these cliffs. That's a problem because for the Greeks, the religious festivals, the religious sacrifices and everything else, none of these actually occurred in the temple. The sacrifices were held outside the temple. The altar was always in front of the temple, which tended to be in front of the east. Um, so you'd be performing these sacrifices under the sky, um, usually held either at sunrise or just before sunrise, so you'd get to see the stars in the sky, and you'd have these whacking great to cliffs in the way. So what effect does that have? Well, it's a matter of having a look to see when these stars rise over the horizon. This is um, a picture of the sky. Rotenev is the brightest star in Delphinus. And if we say that Delphinus rises around the 21st of December, then what we find is that if we go back and have a look at sunrise a week later, we'll see that the star is slightly higher in the sky and this continues through into early January, and then later on. So by the time we get up to three weeks, or then later four weeks, the star is actually getting quite high into the night sky before the sunrise blots it out. Now, like I said, there is this high horizon at Delphi. And so what we find is that at Delphi, the star would actually have to be quite high in the horizon anyway to be visible. And how high is this horizon? Well, Efrosini Butsikas has been out astronomically surveying the site, and she's found that this horizon is 27 degrees. And this is really helpful for the idea, because this delays the helical rising of Delphinus at Delphi by a month, and so it actually quite neatly matches what we see on the ground. So, why does this matter then? Well, in the past, Calendrical calibration is generally focused on this idea of the metonic cycle. This is the number of full moons you can get into a solar year. And what we have is a time before Meton. Meton was active in the late 5th century BC, so what were people doing before he was working on this idea? And this, I this method works with Hesiodic astronomy, so this would go back to the 8th century BC. It also means that we've got a fairly accurate marker for when we want to calibrate the calendar. I mean, plus or minus three or four days, that's you know a, a region of about a week when we could expect to see the star rising. It, this is going to vary according to weather and local atmospheric conditions, but it would look like you could use Delphinus as a marker for the winter. If we have a look to see when people are putting in these extra months, particularly in the Athenian calendar, we notice that people are putting the extra months in midwinter, which is where we'd expect it if we were watching Delphinus to see what month it should be. And finally, this use of helical rising gives us an apolitical means of actually coordinating. You can actually say what time something should be occurring without actually having to make a, a political statement. And if you want to hold a panhellenic event, then you need a simple but non-political way of being able to say when, you know, when something is occurring. So, if you want more information, the original paper, you can find it at bit.ly slash Delphi. Um, that's behind a paywall. So if you want to try and pick it up for free, you can email me, and there's my address, and I can send you an off-print. I've been blogging on the subject, uh, bit.ly uh, slash Delphi.blog, and you can also read more about Delphi in general at the other addresses that I've put here. Thanks for watching.